and we're the Two Gay Reefers. Hey Reefers, Gordon here from the Two Gay Reefers. Darren's up there being cameraman for a change and uh, it's been raining all afternoon here. A massive big storm come across. What better thing to do is to get out and do an actual water test. Uh, since our video up here where Nick did our first water test in a long, long time, uh, we've actually been regularly doing our water tests. I'd say we do a full water test, which we're gonna do today at least once a week. Uh, we check alkalinity, salinity, and a few other things, you know, once or twice throughout the week as well. So we're keeping on top of it so we know what our perimeters are at all times. We fully use the Red Sea test kits as well as the henna checkers. I love these henna checkers, they just make life so, so much easier. Uh, but for those things that we don't have henna checkers for, we rely on the Red Sea uh, test kits. I've got myself all set up here. I'm sitting behind my uh, my Red Sea. A couple of new clowns we've put in here recently. Shh, don't tell anyone. Uh, that, that's coming up in a future video. I've got all my test kits ready. I've got some RO to do my calcium check. Uh, and I've got my salt water here to, uh, to do all the rest of the checks. Uh, I've got all my clean, empty vials here to use. Um, and I've got my phone here to set as a stopwatch. So let's get on with it. First test I always do is the one that takes the longest, which is our nitrate test. So I'll use the uh, Red Sea Marine Care Multi Test Kit. This one here, uh, as we said, this is probably the first test kit, or probably the second test kit we got. Uh, this is probably the best one we use for everything other than the Hannah Checkers. So very, very good um, test kits. So out of this one, we only use, the, most of the time, we only use the nitrate test and the pH test. Alrighty, so we're starting with the nitrate test. So I've got my little nitrate test kit card here. Alright, I need my C, B, and A. I've got myself a, one of the little red C vials and a 5 mil syringe. Alright, make sure you get an accurate amount of, of salt water, put it into the vial. First thing you want to do is put five drops of the reagent A. One, two, three, four, five. Note you keep the bottle directly up and down when you're uh, dropping it out. Uh, that gets the, 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 the full drop out of it each time. Give it a shake for 10 seconds. All right, next one is your reagent B. This one you need to get a level scoop and put it in. Hey Siri, set a timer for one minute. Okay, your timer is set for one minute. This one requires to mix it for 60 seconds or one minute. So I always use my timer on my phone to uh, to do that. And while we're going, beer. Yeah. Next you get your reagent C. Once again, one level scoop. And the key is to make sure it's a level scoop, not a mounted scoop or anything like that. Give it a shake for 10 seconds. Right there, I can already see that it's probably, probably sitting a little bit higher than I like, but that's okay. Hey Siri, set a timer for nine minutes. Okay, nine minutes and counting. All right, so this one takes nine minutes for everything to work. Uh, once again, I use my iPhone for the, the timer. Clean up as you go, I always find is the best thing to do, otherwise you end up with a big mess of stuff at the end of the day. Make sure your lids are all done up tight. All right, next is your pH. Grab yourself another clean vial. This time you need five mils of salt water from your tank, obviously. And you put three drops of the reagent. One, two, three. Give it a shake for 10 seconds. Alrighty. So funny thing is, every time we've done a pH test, every single time this is, since day one through to... Not today, because it makes a liar of me. So we won't talk about this. But normally our pH is exactly 8.2 every single time. Today it is a clear 8.0. So Darren, keep a record record of that. So matching the color of, of the liquid with the color on the card. 
to 8.0. All right, next uh, test we're gonna do is the magnesium. So we use the Red Sea Magnesium Pro test kit. This one, other than the calcium Hannah te checker, these two are the most annoying tests I have to do. They're just really complicated and time consuming and fiddly. So, but I think this one's probably the worst. So, once again, get everything out again. So you got your syringy thing, you got your reagent C, reagent B, reagent A, two mil syringe, and your card. Grab yourself another clean vial. All right, you wanna grab two mils in this time of salt water from the tank you're testing. All right, first step is to do one drop times five with a 15 second mix between it. This is the part I hate. Third drop. Drop. And the last drop. All right, grab your reagent B, and you want to put five drops in. And shake for a minute or 60 seconds. Sometimes I need a second uh, phone to do this with, but Darren's recording on one, I'm timing on another one. So they just count. Step, you get your reagent C. You get this little contraption thingy and your one mil syringe. I've always struggled with this particular part. All right. So, not sure if you can see here, but because we've got the little nib on the end of it, which helps with the actual individual little drops, uh, you fill it up to as far as it will go, but where this black bit is in the plunger, it needs to be at the one mil mark. And that means, because this bit here holds about a mil, so you've got that mil left over at the top here. Not sure if that makes sense, but we always struggle with that when we first started. So you put it into this contraption thingy, screws onto the vial, and then drop by drop, put it in. And you're waiting for the, the liquid to turn blue. That's a nice blue there. You can see where the plunger is, is at the four. The liquid's at the, at the three. Once again, because there is a 0.1 of a mil in the actual nib itself, we read to the plunger. So it's reading at 0.4. Go to the back of your card here. So it goes from how much you've used. So I've used from point, from 1.0 to 0 0.4. So I've used 0.6. Now magnesium is sitting at 1200. So Darren, can you record 1200 please? Now always make sure I put the, the lid back on the vial when I put it over to one side, just in case something happens and you knock it over. All right, that is the timer for the nitrate test. So it looks like our nitrate has crept up again. So for a little while there, it was sitting around that sort of five to, to, to 10 mark. It's actually now crept back up to about 20. We know we've got a bit of a nitrate issue. We've always had a nitrate issue. Uh, we do dose no pox, but it uh, it did run out the other week. And we've also added a lot of new fish to the uh, to the tank just recently. So, Darren, record nitrate at 20, please. Now we're on to the henna checkers. So we we currently use the henna checker for our phosphate. This one here. We use it for our alkalinity and our, and our calcium. If you haven't used Hannah checkers before, I really do like these things. They do work really well. They do run on batteries, which means you do have to always be replacing the batteries. So for your uh, phosphate one, obviously use the green one and you need your phosphate uh, reagent stuff. Turn your hand checker on so it goes through cycle one. So you get one of these little vials here, these little tall ones, and you want to fill it up as long as you don't go over the 10 mil mark. As you can see, there's actually a lot of bubbles in there, okay? 
Hand checkers don't like all those bubbles, so you do need to get rid of them, or most of them, before you actually put it in there. On the front of the hand checker itself, the screen now says C1 on this particular one, which means that I put in a vial of just salt water with no reagent in it to get a, a, a first reading. So you put that in, press on that. It takes about a minute or so for it to, to read. In the meantime, you get your reagent ready. Now these, things, these little satchels are really difficult when you first, don't, if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, it was Inappropriate Reefer that did a video that actually showed you. The best thing to do is fold them in half, like that. Grab your scissors. Cut that bit off. Open it back up again. Not all the way. It creates a nice little funnel. The checker is now saying C2, which means I take out the vial, I pour in the reagent, make sure it all goes in there, make sure there's none left over. Put the lid back on and give it a shake for two minutes until the powder is completely dissolved. All right, I've shaken that for about a minute or so and it's all uh, nice and clear now. Just give it a tap to get rid of all the, any little bubbles in there. Put it back in, close it up. Now, trick with this one, and it doesn't work with, it's not the same with all of them, but this particular phosphate test, uh, tester or checker, you need to hold that in, and then it comes up a countdown timer for three minutes. So you put that aside and wait your three minutes. Four, three, two, one. What's it say, Darren? 0.56. 0.56, so phosphate's currently sitting at 0.56. So good or bad, Darren? It's high but coming down, there you go. Next, probably my favorite one, the easiest one, this was the first Hannah Checker system we got, which was your alkalinity. It's probably the easiest test to do, in my opinion. Get yourself your 10 mil vial. Once again, you need your Hannah Checker itself. You need your reagent. You need 10 mil of water. This is the test, uh, the, the test that I do all the time, at least three, four times a week or more. Fill it up to the 10 mil mark. Spill a little bit of water on it, so give it a dry. Make sure there's no bubbles in there. There's C1 on the checker, so you put the vial with just the, the salt water in there, or you're waiting for it to do its thing. Grab your reagent, grab your one mil syringe, Now it says C2, so you take out the, the, the vial. Put your one mil in there. Just says shake it three times. Make sure there's no bubbles. And this one reads pretty much straight away. Takes about uh, 30 seconds or so. Our alkalinity is currently at 8.7. Darren's giving me the nod, so we're good. Next one, if you've ever done a calcium test with the hand checker, it's a pain in the ass. That's why you gotta have RO water ready. Alrighty, you've got your checker itself, you've got your reagent, you have your little satchels of reagents as well. Don't get it mixed up with your phosphate one because that'd be bad. And then you've got all these bits and pieces here that you need. First thing you want to do is get your calcium reagent, your one mil syringe, and put that into the vial. All right, you grab your little uh, pipette thing and you're filling it up with RO water and you want to fill it up to the 10 mil mark again, like you do, like the, like the other ones. All right. Give it a shake for about 15 seconds or so. Make sure there's no major bubbles. It says C1 on the front of the checker. Pop it in and wait. Next thing you want to do is have your reagent B ready. So once again, get all the all the powder into the bottom corner of it here. Fold it over. Thank you, Inappropriate Reef, for showing me how to do this. It made life so much easier. Grab this thing, and I don't know what it's called, but it's a pain in the ass. 
And I always test it because I always feel like I'm going to get it wrong. You've got to basically... That much water, of the salt water, into the checker. So the actual salt water that you're testing, you're putting like 0, .00 of um, whatever this thing is. All right. It's all the salt water you put in. You get your reagent, pour that in. Once again, give it a shake for about 15 seconds. Make sure everything's mixed and make sure there's no major bubbles. Pop it in and wait. Once again, this one is nice and quick. It takes about 30 or seconds or so for it to read. And it comes up at 4 point, no, 402, so 402. And if I know anything, I think our calcium has dropped a little bit. I'm getting a nod. So recently we have changed our supplements. We were using another supplement and we found it just wasn't giving us the results we liked or we wanted. Uh, so we've gone back to using the Red Sea. What we were using the Red Sea when it was our first tank, we've gone back to using exactly the same uh, supplements, the A, B and C, uh, Reef, Reef Foundation. Reef Foundation A, B, and C. Uh, however, we did go to the powdered method this time, uh, uh, purely for cost saving, uh, because it is is, is uh, going to use a lot more of it in the uh, in Reefzilla. Alrighty, last but definitely not least is to check your salinity. Always good idea to keep an eye on your salinity so you know exactly where things are sitting. So we use natural salt water. We did a water change yesterday morning. This is our first test since then. Um, we use this salinity refractometer. I really like it. I really do. It works really well. Grab out the re refractometer. Grab yourself some RO water. And you want to give it a clean. Just always worth giving it a clean. Just in case you left some salt water on it last time or anything like that. Which I know I didn't, but always worth doing. Give it a clean. Then you want to grab a couple of drops of RO. And every single time I use it, I checked that it's uh, still reading correctly. All right, so that is reading at absolute zero. So we know that it doesn't need to be recalibrated at all. All righty, grab the same pipette. Now I always just run through a bit of salt water through it a couple of times just to make sure I'm not putting any RO on there to get a false reading. Put a couple of drops on there. Look up towards the light. And we are getting a 1.025, exactly where we want our salinity to be. So that means we're nice and happy. Grab some RO water, give it a nice clean, give it a dry off. Alright guys, that is everything that we test. Uh, we do a major test like this at least once a week. Uh, and then we do a couple of little supplement tests throughout the week, particularly the... Uh, alkalinity, that's the main one we, we keep an eye on. We know if the alkalinity does anything major, we know something else is wrong as well. So uh, we know where everything needs to be sitting. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been good being back involved with the uh, Two Gay Reefer channel. Not that I was, wasn't was involved. I was just behind the camera instead of being in front of the camera a lot. Really loving the hobby at the moment. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me as I do my water test this afternoon. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Like, comment and subscribe. Like, like comment, comment and subscribe. subscribe. Have a good one guys. And keep it salty! See you guys! Bye for now!